Welcome back to Winners and Losers, the show that looks at the highs and the lows from Premier League football this weekend. What a weekend it was. Plenty to talk about. And joining me with the hair of Ben Chilwell, what a trim it is, is Chris Hamill. Are you going to go back to the skin fade? Or are you going to remain with the Ben Chilwell trim? That's what everybody wants to know in the comments. All right, okay. So the plan is, plan A at the moment, I'm going to go for a low skin fade rather than a high one. Um... Because, of course, if you leave a bit of weight in the side, Joe, it enables mm. you to push your hair back to keep yeah. this slick back effect. But you, very excitingly, are going for a trim after this. What are you getting done to that, Vance? Good God, I need it. it my hair is absolutely vile at the moment. Uh, I'll just get the standard mid-skin fade. Get him, get him done. Absolutely buzzing. But I'll tell you another man who's buzzing. It's the talking point. It's Jamie Vardy. What well a linked. weekend for the for the big dog, Hamster. Yeah, the 33-year-old Leicester striker now on 21 goals for the season, Joseph, after scoring a brace mm. against Crystal Palace at the King Power on Saturday. And I've got to say, it's a good job there was a late flurry in this game because everyone else in the Football Daily group chat was watching Manchester United versus Bournemouth, where it was goals galore. And I was watching this match and my oh my was the first 45 dull as dishwater. Leicester's first win in all competitions since Project Restart and it keeps them one point ahead of Chelsea and I think three points ahead of fifth placed Manchester United. But it is getting to twitchy bum time now, isn't it? Leicester mm. fans, players, managers looking over the shoulder now. Uh, it feels inevitable that they're going to get caught, but let's hope not. Uh, the Foxes only managed three goals in their previous four games, with Jamie Vardy's last goal involvements coming against Aston Villa. Uh, that was in March, I believe, and we were made to wait for his goals here, like I said. The former England striker not registering an effort on target until the 77th minute, when, of course, substitute Harvey Barnes, who injected a bit of pace into the game. My, my, was it crying out for it. Joel Ward was oh. there for the taking. <laughs> he robbed Sacco, teed up Vardy. He couldn't miss from eight yards out, and he got his first of the match. Now, despite JV9 not having his best game, Leicester fans will probably take some heart from the fact he was more active in this 90. So we've been commenting all season that it's going to be very hard for Jamie Vardy to sustain his form over the first half of the season at the very least when he's not taking over one and a half, two shots per 90. In this match, Joe, he took six. Some of them were a bit <laughs> wayward. They came late on in the game, like I said. But he looks match fit again after a couple of recurrent injuries. And let's hope this can kickstart Leicester's end of the campaign. Yeah, he's got to go down as a potential Leicester legend now, really, hasn't he? 129 goal involvements sure. in 206 Premier League games. I mean, that's faster to 100 goals than Drogba, Lukaku, Rooney, Enelka, Defoe, Robbie Keane. Some absolute Premier League legends in there. The last Leicester player to hit 100 goals. 1933-34 top flight season. Unbelievable, <laughs> that is. I mean, let's, let's not forget as well, but Jamie Vardy came into the professional game pretty late. Didn't make his Fleetwood debut uh, in the Football League until he was 25. Didn't make his Premier League debut until he was 27. I think the only player in the 100 club who joined the Premier League later than that was Ian Wright. So he's in some unbelievable company. He's averaging a goal every 123 minutes this season. I think that's only better by Sergio Aguero. And obviously Sergio Aguero is now out for the season, so not a threat to that golden boot, although there are some threats creeping up on mm. him, aren't there? Um, for some of the Liverpool boys and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, of course. A couple of other noteworthy performances from this game. Uh, Wilfred and Didi. Beast. Finding some of that fantastic early season form. Of course, he's had a couple of injury setbacks, hasn't he? But seven tackles and interceptions. Kelechi Iheanacho as well. Fifth Premier League goal in just nine starts. But yeah, the day was really about Jamie Vardy, wasn't it? And here's what his agent had to say on his career. He's won the Premier League. He's won the Football Writers Player of the Year. He's played in the semi-final of a World Cup. And now he's scored 100 Premier League goals. If he'd have said that to me the day I walked through his front door, would never have ever imagined that ever happening. Like we said in that opening section then, absolutely unavoidable that Manchester United featured in our winners this week after putting in a rip-roaring performance against Bournemouth. This suggestion comes from at Thuranchu. And this is where I'd normally remind you to subscribe. But we've got some big news on Football Daily. The Extra Time podcast and other projects have a new home. 
on the Football Daily podcast channel, which is going to launch tomorrow, all being well. So please keep your eyes peeled for that. If you're watching this in retrospect, go over and subscribe. Um, but Joe, without any further ado, take it away, mate. The floor is yours. Manchester United, they're fun to watch. What is happening? Ah, oh, finally. Do you know how long it has been since I've enjoyed watching a Manchester United team? It has been so long since I've actually watched the game, come home, then wanted to watch the match of the day highlights too, because that's how fun the team was. Usually United, I'm used to them scraping past Bournemouth 1-0, thanks to an 89th minute Fellaini header or some such nonsense. But no, not this weekend. Smashed them. 5-2. On Saturday, obviously extended our run, unbeaten run, I should say, to 16 matches in the process. <clears throat> in those 16 games, we've scored 43 goals and conceded six. Obviously, that is something that can't continue because it's just absurd, <laughs> but it is fantastic to watch. 11 clean sheets in the process. And let's not forget, you know, 11 of those 16 games were played without Rashford and Pogba. So it hasn't been United at full, full strength the entire time, but mm. it didn't start very well in this game. You know, Harry Maguire, a bit statuesque, fantastic bit of skill by Stanislas to nutmeg him. And then De Gea probably shouldn't be beaten at the front post. But such is United's form and confidence. Even when that went in, I thought we're still going to smash this Bournemouth team. Whereas in the past, I'd have thought, oh, here we go. This is going to be 2 all, 1-0 to Bournemouth for 85 minutes. But no, United scored three goals before half-time. Obviously, Greenwood, Rashford and Martial, that Martial goal. Oh, I know yeah. that uh, Greenwood's was good, but Martial's was special. It's that Take little bit, you know, his shape of, the, of his foot after he's hit mm. it. You know, and it's almost like a little bit side on. Yeah. Just, Just a bit uh, Henri-esque. Unreal, absolutely unreal. So that takes the front three's combined total to this season to 55 goals in all competitions. Oof. 20 for Martial, 20 for Rashford, 15 for Greenwood, who's just 18 years old. So that's an obscene tally for an 18-year-old. That's actually four more than Liverpool's front three. Now, obviously, Liverpool are a much better team and better individuals, but I just thought that highlights quite nicely how well that front three are actually playing under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the moment. Uh, it's also the first time United have scored five goals or more at home since 2011 so that just tells you how long this kind of dull old Trafford has has been happening for and it's also the first time that two players in Rashford and Martial have scored 10 plus home goals in a Premier League campaign since Ronaldo and Tevez in 2007-2008. So it's finally happening. United are seeing real positives from that front three. You know, people were really hammering Solskjaer, I think, for selling Lukaku in the club for selling Lukaku when he went and smashed it into Milan. And he's done a brilliant job out there. But it's also paved the way for plenty more goals to come from the rest of the squad. Martial stepped up. Rashford stepped up. And now you're seeing Greenwood, who's got eight goals in the Premier League, aged 18 or younger. Only, I think, three players have done that in Premier League history. And they're oh. Fowler and Rooney so fingers crossed we've got a bit of a gem on our hands because it certainly feels like we have two-footed one of the most talented players I've ever seen come through our academy and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was hyping him up big time after the game. Mason's first season fantastic uh, but we, we, we've always known um, that the, there's a special kid there. Yeah, I mean, as you just gauged from Joe's rant, United deserved victors in this game. 69% possession and 19 shots with 10 coming on target. Deadly conversion rate compared to Bournemouth's 7 with 3 arriving on target. Actually had the game at 2.7 to 1.5 in the favour of United. And it was down like Joseph said once again, to some great individual performances. Greenwood, I won't talk about him for too long. Two goals, six touches in the opposition's box, though, uh, and a 91% pass accuracy. Did want to flag that because he is very adept at link-up play, which is another pretty staggering feature in, in his game, considering he's so young. Uh, very capable of dropping back, isn't he, and linking midfield to, an, uh, to attack. But man of the match was once again Bruno Fernandes, the maestro. One goal, two assists, three shots and five key passes. Just a creative maelstrom. There's a word you can all complain about in the comments. He's now <laughs> reached 10 goal involvements in nine Premier League appearances for Manchester United. The joint quickest of anyone at the club alongside greats, modern greats like Eric Cantona and Robin Van Persie. Uh, and he continues that very fruitful 
partnership with Paul Pogba, doesn't he? Uh, people were sort of debating how Ole would set up, how he would incorporate them both into the side uh, and get the best out of both of them. But shock horror not been a problem uh the frenchman in this game managing two shots three key passes two dribbles and 91 touches uh which is the most on the pitch barring harry Maguire. uh as for bournemouth their woes continue um and you know we won't miss them if they go down so i'm not going to talk about them for too long uh ramsdale's now shipped 12 goals since the restart bless him defensively just absolutely stunk up the place. Uh, Nathan Ake and Adam Smith had particularly poor games, getting dribbled past twice apiece and failing to make a single tackle, with the latter conceding a penalty. Uh, and now they sit 19th, one point from safety, and they've got Spurs, uh, a wounded Spurs on Thursday to play, uh, while United, United even play Villa on the same night. Uh, they're just two points off Chelsea, like we mentioned at the top of the show. Um, so that, that race for fourth, which prior to lockdown didn't really seem that, not interesting, but up for debate, it's now, it's now you know, within touching distance for Manchester United. Joe, have you got faith? Do you smell uh, victory? Uh, well, the trouble is it's not in our hands. And I think Chelsea are on really, really good form. So I can see Chelsea pretty much winning all of their remaining games. The one positive for United is Chelsea still have to play Leicester and then United have to play Leicester so uh, those are the games I think that are going to be really really crucial but we should have enough to be beat the likes of Villa but any team that's in the relegation zone you just fancy to sort of I don't know do you know what I mean just put on one display to keep them up and I hope it's not this Thursday against United but never say never what do you guys think at home let us know in the comments below Moving on to our losers this week and probably should have been Manchester City, to be honest with you, dropping points away to Southampton. But we had Southampton as our winners last week, so we've decided not to include either of those teams. I'm sorry, Ralph, you are doing a fantastic job there. But instead, we're picking up on Wolves. Not a great time to release Sunday Vibes yesterday <laughs> with, that, with that title. We got roundly mocked in the comments right, uh, because, of course, they lost 2-0, didn't they, at home to a fairly mediocre Arsenal side. It's their first Premier League loss in nine games mm. and their first loss by more than one goal since September when, of course, Chelsea turned them over 5-2. And Wolves actually edged possession. You know, they outshot Arsenal, but they really failed to have any clear-cut opportunities. I don't really remember Emi Martinez having to make any outstanding saves in this one. And Arsenal did a really great job of nullifying Adama Traore. Um, XG, you know, suggests it was a close one and that potentially a 1-1 draw would have been a fair result. 1.1 to 1.3 in Arsenal's favour. But what it does mean is that Wolves fall further back on this top four race and it's going to be incredibly tight. Any drop points have a massive effect at this stage of the season. They are on 52 points, of course, three behind Manchester United now. And they still got to face Sheffield United, Everton and Chelsea on the last day. What a huge game that is for Nuno and Frank. But despite all of that, despite a fairly poor weekend, Nuno Espirito Santo still feels his side are heading in the right direction. And uh, no, don't focus about anything else, About only focus about the way, the how we want to do things and prepare for the next challenge, Sheffield. Tough, tough one. Yes, this now means that Arsenal have won three consecutive Premier League games without conceding for the first time since November 2017. Uh, they played a back three of Louise, Mustafi and Kalazanac in this game, or Koscielniak, as Dave Jackson calls him. Uh, Bakaya <laughs> Sacco opening the scoring in this game what a goal. Reminiscent of Moussa Dembele against Manchester City in the Champions League. Wraps his foot all the way around it. Steers it into the far corner. What a talented young man he is. And that was his first goal in the Premier League. Surprising because he's ripped it up in other tournaments, hasn't he? And in cup competitions where he's been gifted more minutes. Um, but he's now the second youngest English player to score in the Premier League for the Gunners after Oxlade Chamberlain uh, scored against Blackburn in February 2012. So not a bad week for the youngster after securing that bumper new deal as well, committing his future to the club. Uh, Alexandra Lacazette's goal was his first away from home in the Premier League since February 2019, ending an absolutely hounding run of 16 away games without one. Uh, and despite only coming on as a 76-minute substitute, Joe Willock 
uh, created two chances, including the assist for Lacazette's goal, which was more than any other Arsenal player. So great for Willock, uh, good little cameo role, but I mean, not great for the creative prowess uh, of every other Arsenal player on that pitch. Um, I mean, with Leno still out, uh, Martinez started again and he's now kept a clean sheet in six of his eight Premier League starts for Arsenal, uh, which is the best ratio of any Gunners keeper with at least five starts in the competition. Although th the run has been a little bit more forgiving in those games, hasn't it? Uh, Arsenal now three points behind Wolves in the league. And if they have a good run, they could push for European football. Um, but like you sort of intimated that earlier, I don't know if that was in the show or as we were just chatting, to be honest, Joseph. Um, they've got Leicester, Spurs and Liverpool. So a really tough run in in comparison to the likes of uh, Manchester United, uh, who is relatively easy. Um, so I think it's pro probably beyond them at this point. Uh, Joe, do you have any positive words to say about Arsenal or would you like to sort of kick them while they're down a bit more? No, do you know what? Um, I think they're doing all right. I think Kieran Tierney's been a massive positive since Project Restart. Uh, I think he's really hit the ground running because obviously very unfortunate with injuries. It's something that he's been plagued with really all his career, isn't he? You'll be able to attest that, I'm sure, Hamill. And hopefully he can he can stay injury-free because when he's in the team, Arsenal looks so much more competent, I mm. think. Yeah, I saw Hector Bellerin linked with PSG as well uh, at the weekend. One of the weirdest rumours I've seen. He a lot would of Arsenal do fans... so well to get that move. <laughs> A lot of Arsenal fans saying that he's, he's struggling since returning. Mm. He's lost a little bit of pace. So hopefully that's not the case because we, we kind of hyped up uh, the Bella and Tierney combination um, an awful lot when the move was made. And and yeah, it'd be, it'd be sad to see that, that dynamic broken up without really uh, achieving its full potential. So yeah, let's see. Arsenal fans, you might secure European football. Uh, probably not, but uh, you can always hope. That is the end of the show. What do we have left to push, Joe? Uh, we'll go and check out Euro Roundup. Doogie Critchley will be talking all about the continent's best games. I'd imagine one of Barcelona or Real Madrid will be in there. Cristiano Ronaldo, I'm sure he will be in there having a season for the ages. He just keeps getting better, of course. Uh, so, yeah, Doogie Critchley for ERU. And like we said earlier on the show, uh, keep your eyes peeled for the new podcast channel and go and check out some of the... Some of the weekend's content as well. Um, we've got uh, 10 moments that define Liverpool's season. A great script from Michael McCubbin. Go and check it out. Bye. Bye.